All right, keeping another close eye on the weather yet again this evening. It's a Thursday evening. It's weather for Weather Geeks time. We're going to have a noisy night, it looks like, with a window that lasts a couple of hours across our viewing area in the wee hours of Friday morning, mostly after midnight tonight, that uh, storms could really mean some business as they push through. We'll talk about uh, what's going to happen in the future, but uh, let's first look back at what did and did not happen on Wednesday. We had a gradient of rainfall across our area Wednesday with lowest amounts in western PA, especially in Lawrence and Mercer counties, and progressively higher amounts as you got into our central and southern and western viewing areas. But all of this kind of paled in comparison to what happened to our west. We saw a general quarter to a half an inch in some of our eastern areas and an inch or more, up to two inches or so in some of the uh, western and southern parts of our television viewing area. But just off to our west, they had one heck of an evening last evening in Cleveland, Lorraine, heading down towards Mansfield and Worcester, uh, even as uh, close by as Akron and Canton. Three, four, five inches worth of rain, pretty common with those training thunderstorms yesterday. We also got a little bit lucky in the temperature department today. The debris clouds from the long-lasting thunderstorms from yesterday into last night, they hung around for parts of the day today, keeping a lid on our temperatures. The temperature rise was not as fast as it would have been in the absence of those clouds. So we were expecting 89 today. Well, we got to 83 this afternoon, so it was not quite as oppressive as it looked like it could be. And, you know, I got a lot of comments on social media today. Good questions. You know, will the clouds and somewhat cooler weather today uh, inhibit overnight thunderstorms? Will it uh, put the kibosh on them a little bit? And the answer to that is probably not for a couple of reasons. One, these storms are going to be rolling through our area well after sunset. And so what happened during the day really doesn't have a, much of an influence on what's going to happen here at 2 in the morning. Uh, the other thing is we've got a lot of instability off to our west. These storms are firing up as we speak in Michigan and parts of Illinois and Indiana, and they are feeding on a very unstable atmosphere out there. So for good reason, severe thunderstorm watches have already been issued for a good chunk of central and southern Michigan, back towards Milwaukee and Chicago. I would expect more severe thunderstorm watches to be issued before the evening is through for all of northern Ohio and uh, probably northwestern PA as well. Mention the instability. If you're uh, familiar with uh, uh, something called CAPE in the weather business, that's C-A-P-E, Convectively Available Potential Energy. It's a big, long, you know, fancy sounding meteorological thing. We just call it instability on our weather graphic here to kind of simplify things. But uh, when you see CAPE values getting up in the 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 joules per kilogram range, and we've seen some of those numbers today. That's extreme instability. Uh, we've seen numbers like that today in parts of Illinois and western Indiana. And again, that's kind of the breeding grounds where these storms are getting going. They're fe uh, feeding on this extreme instability, and that will give them a lot of momentum going into the evening. So despite our atmosphere right now overhead in our area not being tremendously unstable, these storms that will impact us in several hours will have been born, if you will, in a very unstable environment. Now. A recipe for storms tonight, we don't have a strong cold front pushing through or anything like that. It's a pretty subtle feature, actually, in the upper levels. Uh, it's this thing right here. It doesn't look like much to the untrained eye, right? You know, it uh, doesn't look like much at all. But it's a uh, an upper level disturbance kicking through the Great Lakes. It's got a what we call a speed max with it, a little mini jet stream, kind of a low-level jet, if you will, uh, coming through. And that's going to be enough to... Uh, instigate storms in this very hot and humid air mass just off to our west. This disturbance will pass well to our south and east by Friday morning, giving us better weather in store for Friday. With our midday up to date to update, I should say today, the Storm Prediction Center did upgrade um, southeastern Michigan, northern Ohio, northwestern Pennsylvania to the enhanced risk, level 3 out of level 5. Just a reminder of what these risk categories mean. We've been in an enhanced risk more often this summer than most years. We average one, two, three times per year being in that level three or higher risk on day one. We've seen it uh, maybe four or five times at this point. Now the first couple of enhanced risks we had earlier in the year didn't produce a lot of severe weather locally, but the last couple did. And so yeah, anytime we're in an enhanced risk or higher, level three or higher, that really gets our attention. That means that uh, we're seeing a pretty good chance of some strong to severe thunderstorms when we are in that kind of a risk. When we break down the individual risks for tonight, um, the tornado risk in the brown color across northern Ohio, northwest PA, that's a 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles of any point on the map. The hail risk 
of two inches or larger is about a five percent. I think there could be some pea sized hail, maybe a little bit larger, but big hailstones don't seem all that likely with this activity later on. Damaging wind gusts remain our number one concern, and the risk is up to 30% or higher in northern Ohio and northwestern PA. And those black lines, that's what we call a hatched area. That means the Storm Prediction Center is particularly concerned about wind gusts perhaps being damaging or destructive, if you will, 70 miles per hour or so. Anytime you see kind of a hatched area like that in their products. Now, all those percentages, you might think they're pretty low, right? Um, you know, a lot of times when we talk about the outcomes, the possible outcomes, we talk about 2% chance, 5% chance in this situation, damaging wind gusts 30% or higher. All of them are not, you know, huge numbers or anything, but when you consider climatology, we're getting pretty late in the year for a high-end severe weather event, especially a high-end wind event. In our part of the country at this time of the year, your average day, the chances of damaging wind gusts, you know, it's basically 1%. Um, your chance of damaging wind gusts on any average day in mid to late August. So a 30% chance of that occurrence is many or orders of magnitude, you know, 15 times higher than your typical late August day. So don't be fooled by the relatively small percentages sometimes on those graphics that we show you. So damaging wind gusts, the number one concern. Now what we can't rule out tonight at this point is embedded within a possible squall line pushing through you might get some little curly cues in that line, uh, spin up tornadoes, something that we can't rule out. I don't think it's a high chance, but we just showed you kind of the map showing percentages, two to 5% perhaps of a chance of an isolated tornado. Um, the most likely outcome is a band of pretty strong winds coming through along the leading edge of a quickly moving northwest to southeast band of thunderstorms. 60 to 70 mile per hour winds will be a possibility. And remember what I always say, wind is wind. And don't forget, an EF0 tornado has 65 mile per hour winds. So if you get straight line winds of 65 miles per hour, gonna do the same thing. Anytime we have a high wind event, you know, I get a lot of comments. Well, did we have a tornado? I swear we had a tornado. It sounded like a tornado, it was a freight train. You know, we get comments like that all the time. Truth of the matter is, we don't see tornadoes very often around here. What we see a lot more often, straight line wind events and downbursts. And again, some of those higher end wind events can be equivalent to a low end tornado. Your siding and your roof and your shingles and your uh, trees don't care if the wind came up from, from a tornado or not. So the timing on this, you know, this is going to be after the 11 o'clock news tonight. Um, we're going to go on the air at 11 and this band of thunderstorms may not even be into Ohio just yet. I think it enters the northern part of the state as we go towards midnight or so and impacting our area probably as we head towards the one o'clock hour into the two o'clock hour, perhaps this model might be a little bit slow. A lot of times these things outrun what the models think several hours in advance. So I wouldn't be surprised if at 2.18 a.m. this line is more like this, something like that. Um, so again, this can be when a lot of us are in bed. Not me, I'm gonna be here. <laughs> um, but when a lot of us are sleeping tonight, uh, this band is gonna roll through. And so you're gonna be woken up probably by some thunder in some spots and hopefully you won't be woken up by flying debris or anything like that. Be ready for this before you go to bed this evening, assuming you're going to bed before these storms roll through. Make sure everything's charged up. Make sure your devices are charged up. That includes not only, you know, laptops and phones and tablets and things like that, but any medical devices uh, that need to be charged up. Make sure those things are ready to go before uh, these storms roll through. If you have a NOAA weather radio, uh, make sure that it's in alert mode. Check your battery backup in case you lose power. And of course, the Storm Tracker 21 app. Make sure, you know, a lot of us put our phones on silent, especially at night. Um, this is going to be a night to not put it on silent. You want to be woken up if a, a high-end severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning is issued. Uh, you want to make sure that your devices will alert you to that and you won't sleep through it. All right, once we get through that, uh, you know, kind of 1 and 2 o'clock hour tonight, much better things in store for our Friday. Now, still a pretty muggy day. There's not much of an air mass change with this first front. In fact, that front kind of washes out to our east. Now, it's going to be a fine evening for high school football Friday evening. The more substantial front, though, approaches on Saturday. Small chance for a shower with this Saturday afternoon, but the bigger impacts will be the drying out of the air mass as we go into Saturday uh, night and into Sunday. Beautiful day coming up on Sunday. We should be in pretty good shape into Monday as well. And just a reminder, 21 WFMJ, always a proud sponsor of Panerathon. And I'll be running this uh, 10K race starting in downtown, downtown Youngstown. Sunday morning, beautiful morning. Might be a little fog in the morning. Should turn out to be a sunny midday and afternoon on Sunday. Nice little cool down coming our way next week. Um, a little bit above average, perhaps Monday and Tuesday, but then highs in the lower 70s, it looks like uh, Wednesday and Thursday. 
and our averages over the next 10 days, our long-term 30-year averages drop from 80 to 78. So a couple of days, uh, several degrees below the average for daytime highs middle of next week. We'll launch a live stream tonight on Facebook and my YouTube channels, uh, probably after midnight. Uh, I'm going to be with you th through the duration, so if you want to uh, stay up and keep tabs of what's going on, you can find the links to that on my social media. I don't have my YouTube uh, icon on this thing, but uh, you can search for me on YouTube and find that live stream. Again, we'll probably get that going, it might be after midnight before we really need to fire that thing up because I, I don't think things will get too busy with a lot of warnings for our area until maybe one o'clock or so. All right, so stay safe tonight. Have a great rest of your Thursday night and a great Friday as well. See ya.